UBC has inherited a rare collection of letters from Japanese Canadians who were interned during World War II. And those notes have unveiled a, an unlikely friendship that occurred during one of Canada's darkest chapters. Tom Walsh has the story. By and large, these are Japanese Canadian teenagers who were born in Canada and who have been torn from the only home they've ever known in the middle of high school. This is an incredibly disruptive, traumatic experience for them. It was one of the darkest chapters in Canada's history. Japanese Canadians rounded up during the Second World War and forced into internment camps as enemies of the state. Now a collection of letters has been released to UBC documenting a unique friendship between a group of teenagers at the time that crossed political and racial barriers. This collection is incredibly rare and unique. We do have other materials that relate to the Japanese Canadian experience in British Columbia, but nothing that talks about the relationship of teenagers and of teenagers of Japanese Canadian descent being friends with a non-Japanese Canadian person. The 147 letters were written to Joan Gillis, a non-Japanese Canadian by her friend she met at a high school in British Columbia. Her 12 Japanese Canadian classmates were mostly sent to Alberta and Manitoba to work on sugar beet farms in difficult conditions against their will. But all the time, they kept in touch. They were often working 12-hour days on these sugar beet farms and their movements were strictly controlled by the Canadian government. So even though they weren't in internment camps, this was a very difficult time for these families. Approximately 22,000 Japanese Canadians were interned during this historical injustice and yet these letters offer a glimpse into a friendship that survived. They tell us a history of friendship that challenges our assumptions that this was a story about fear and racism. And the friendship between Joan Gillis and the students here challenges that. It tells us that there were always people that refused the prevailing ideas of the time. That it's not enough to say, well, internment happened because people were racist or people were afraid. And yet despite these difficult circumstances, the teenagers mostly just wanted to talk to Joan about teenager things. So for example, one of Joan's friends writes her from an internment camp in Caslow, British Columbia, to ask what was on the hit parade. And the reason why that mattered so much was because she, like other Japanese Canadians, weren't allowed to own radios. The letters are open to the public for viewing, and while they provide a unique insight into Canadian history, it's hoped that they can also teach future generations about the important values of our time. I think there's really important lessons to learn here from these letters in particular to learn about the possibilities of friendship and the ways that we can refuse the fears and hatred and ideas of our time. In Vancouver, Tom Walsh, City News.